appreciate it. You know, when, when I think about this guy, Ariel Castro in Cleveland, I think if I were the father of one of those, those girls, what would I want to do to Ariel Castro if ever given the opportunity to meet with him face to face? You had that opportunity to meet with John Gardner, yeah. the guy who took and then killed Amber. Please tell us what that was like. Uh, it, it gave me closure, uh, but I, I met with him before our sentencing. Uh, I had to fight a lot to, to get in there uh, to meet with him, but we sat for 30 minutes um, at the jail and I had him walk me through the day of how he took Amber. And, and basically he just, you know, he told her to get in the car and, and she thought he was kidding. Amber wasn't very street smart. She didn't know her surroundings or she might have noticed them. Mm -hmm. But, um, and he, you know, he told me which way he, he drove and everything. You know, there was a time that Amber could have gotten out of the car when she was at a light. Uh, her friends were walking to school. She could have just gotten out of the car and, and ran. But at that point, I'm guessing she was just too scared and in shock that she, this was happening to her. Why do you think she, so he never really actually grabbed her and put her in the car. She got, got in. into yeah. the car. Why do you think she did that? Because she was, well, he's, uh, we all saw how angry, he, you know, how his, how angry he gets, and he's a big man. I, right. You know, my only guess is that she just was in shock that it was happening to her. Right. Well, set the scene, though, in the jail. Uh, is there a glass partition between the two of you? Is he handcuffed? Are you able to walk up to him and smack him <laughs> if you wanted to? Uh, uh, no, there is, a, there is a glass partition. The uh, deputies told me to please stay calm because they didn't want to have to deal with his aftermath of him, uh, you know, getting upset. Right. And I stayed very calm. And, and, and so you say to him, tell me the deal mm -hmm. and what happens? He just goes into the story? Yeah, he goes, I said, walk me through the day and he started through his day. Uh, you know, when he got to the part of uh, raping Amber, uh, he didn't want to continue. He asked if he could stop and I told him no, continue. And I, I made him continue on. I mean, he started sweating. By the time we were done, he was in a full sweat, curled up like an infant and just, you know, just not really sobbing, but just upset about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He really didn't want to tell me about, about, you know, raping her and stuff, but I wanted to know what happened to her. I wanted to know her last few hours. Wow. Um, you feel like he was completely honest with the story that You he know, funny thing is I do feel like he was honest because I, know, I knew Amber so well. Right. And the things that he told me she did and her characteristics and, and what she said to him and, you know, I'm like, there was a few times where I'm like, yes, you know, right. I was I was real proud of like what uh, when she slapped him and called him a name. Um, I was happy that she slapped him and called him a name. She never cussed, but she did that day, and right. I was like, you but just from I know how she is. Right. You have any um, anger towards like not just him? I mean, him. I think that would be obvious, but his mother housing him in a community nearby, knowing what his history was. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you hold them responsible? I mean, we were watching the Castro brothers. They didn't have anything to do with it. His kids had no idea. And I'm finding that somewhat hard to believe. Do you have uh, some resentment he, towards the family? I have some resentments toward his mother because I understand loving your child, you know, unconditionally. But you know what? She never even came out, apologized to us or any, you know, never even faced us and said, you know, my son's a monster. I'm sorry for what he did. Right. I mean, she just hid like a coward. And I have a problem with, with people like that. Absolutely. You know, Carrie, um, first of all, I think you're an unbelievably strong woman okay. to still be able no, to discuss kidding. this and hold it all together. And most importantly, what I want to say to you is as we discuss this issue of keeping our kids safe, um, we need to use your strength, I think, as an inspiration um, and, and keep Amber's name and memory alive. And I think what you're doing with the Team Amber Rescue Project that you've created is great. One more time for I people agree. that Let's want to contact that. you yeah. uh, on Facebook. Um, explain in 30 seconds what, what exactly it is you guys do to help folks. We're an independent search and rescue group and uh, we're here for parents for the community. So goodness, you know, God forbid anybody goes missing, you guys are there to help immediately. Yep. If they call, we're, we're there to help. Yeah. Wow. And you guys just show up and, and help in any way Any way possible. we can. Yep. I mean, I just cannot imagine what it must be like to be the father of one of those girls that was held captive for mm. 10 years, beaten, raped, impregnated, uh, beaten more to, to create you know, yeah. a miscarriage and so on. Um, for you to have had the strength to go meet that monster face to face yeah, is just incredible. incredible. Uh, Carrie, a pleasure yeah, to be thanks. with you thank always. You, thank, you. thank you so we much for sharing that story. Much.